<laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, so we'll talk about... Uh, I'm so old. I hope you have time. Oh, we uh, are You're too. not that <laughs> old. I looked at your birthday on the... Oh, Maybe. Okay. We've been a band for 19 years, so That's our retrospective is pretty long. You're from Queens area or yes, New York? Yes, Queens, or New York. Queens, New York? Yeah. And I did notice that you went to the same high school as Ron Jeremy. Did I did. Did you know and that? And you know what the <laughs> weirdest part about that is, actually, is that my English teacher went to the high school... Uh-huh. Also, while he was there, while he was there, <laughs> and they dated, oh. and she was this like little old lady, and to think of this like little old lady who was our English teacher and had like dated Ron Jeremy was wow. uh, was the strangest thing. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, she probably has pictures of him when he was young. And I've stuff. seen his yearbook photo oh, actually. Have. Just does having he, gone to the school, look, it floats around. <laughs> does he look uh, the same? He no, not at all. <laughs> no. He's got like curly like kind of a mullet ish but it's sort of combed Aww. but it's really <laughs> curly it's very like 70s it's very 70s wow so she probably had a really good time <laughs> i imagine <laughs> right she was probably really sad to end up as an english teacher. yeah i guess so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i just thought that was so funny yeah like, oh wow you went to the same yeah school. there was a couple of nba players also we had a we had a because uh, you know, it's an inner city school, so we didn't have a lot of sports teams. Oh, okay. Um, but we had a basketball team because you don't need a field for that. Sure. You know, there was no room. <laughs> we didn't have a football team or any soccer, nothing, yeah. baseball, nothing like that because oh there was just no space God. for yeah. it, you know. Um, but the basketball team, that was it. So, okay. um, yeah, we had a basketball team that I know won, like, the city championships a bunch and stuff like that. And, um at least one kid that I that was in school at the same time as me went to the NBA. Oh, and there wow. was a few, uh, I think, before and after that went to the NBA. Yeah, yeah. I saw Carl Winslow went to your high school. Too. He did. Yeah, yeah, he well, did. Qu- quite the notable. <laughs> yeah. I hate to think there. of where the world would be now if if that high school didn't exist. Sure, no, yeah. no Ron Jeremy and no Carl Winslow. Yeah. <laughs> Were you born and raised there? As yeah, well? born and raised in Queens, and I lived there for thirty one or two years. Wow. Something like that. Yeah, and that's you started the band there as well. Yeah, well, we started the band kind of in Long Island. I still lived there. Mm-hmm. Technically, the band started. Uh, everybody else was from from Long Island, and that's okay. where our scene was. We when we first started, um, there wasn't a scene in Queens, uh-huh. and we couldn't get booked in any of the clubs in Manhattan. Oh, uh, okay. It was years before we like were able to play a show in Manhattan. I can imagine it's super difficult to get. It was hard. I mean, we grew up like there was such a vibrant scene in Long Island. I mean, we started at the same time as Brand New. Oh, and Taking Back, Taking Back Sunday, Sunday and Glassjaw oh, sure. and all these bands. So we had such a scene. So we were oh, all yeah. playing like VFW halls and okay. places like that in Long Island. Uh huh. Um, because that's where the scene for this music was really like bubbling. Sure. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean, and we just, we were like, you know, they weren't going to book a bunch of kids in emo (laughs) bands in Manhattan, you know, (laughs) we played at CBGB's like maybe a year or two into our career with Taking Back Sunday. And that was like our first time that we got to play like in, in the city. That's so cool. How did you get connected with them? Just from the scene, we grew up going like before we all started our bands, when we were like in high school, we grew up going to shows. Um, Glassjaw came before all of us. Glassjaw was first. And uh, there were like bands like Silent Majority and Mind Over Matter, all these bands that sort of came uh, in the wake of the New York hardcore stuff, Gorilla Biscuits and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, and, and Youth of Today. And um, so then Long Island started its own thing with Glass Draw and Silent Majority and us and Taking Back Sunday and all our generation grew up going to their shows. Okay. I saw glass draw at a high school cafeteria oh when I was like God. 16 awesome. you know so like <laughs> um, so that we grew up going to those shows so we knew each other just as part of the scene and we started bands and then glass draw got a record deal and like they were on like 120 minutes or something yeah. on MTV2 and <laughs> we were like wow like you could do this yeah, you know what I mean like yeah. people we know like are going on tour and they're signing record deals and sure uh, I went out and I, I, there was a band called The Strider from our neighborhood that signed to Equal Vision, where, where Saves a Day was signed to. Yeah. And we were like, wow, they are on the same label as Saves a Day. And like, yeah. we're it's all happening. kind of from your area there. Yeah, they're all there from Jersey. Yeah, yeah Princeton. And, um, and uh, so The Strider signed to Equal Vision and they were touring. And uh, I went out on tour when I was 17. Oh my God. Doing merch for The Strider. And wow. then I w- did a tour doing merch for Brand New. And then uh, I, when I was 17, I started Bayside, and then we started touring. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. how did you get into music 
uh, originally? Did your parents enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, I think the or? same way most people. My parents were really into music, and I grew up listening to everything that they were into, and, you cool. know, the Beatles and, oh, cool. you yeah. know, things like that, uh, the Beach Boys. Yeah. And I always knew that I liked it more than everybody else. Sure. You know, like yeah. I grew up playing baseball, and I had a lot of friends through baseball and through school and stuff, and we would have these family get-togethers, and our parents would put music on, and I knew that, like, I was connecting to it uh-huh. in a way that, like the other, other kids weren't not, you know yeah. at least kids my age you know sure, yeah you're talking six seven year old kids like <laughs> they don't want to listen to their parents music yeah, for yeah. the most part you yeah, know most kids. but i knew <laughs> that like i it's something about like i learned all the words and i would sing along and i learned how to use my parents record player and wow. i would be like five and six years old putting my own oh. vinyls on oh, and listening scary. on my own time you know <laughs> yeah like listening on my own time to like my parents music oh. and stuff that's cool um so i you know i knew early on that like i liked it kind of more than like a lot of the other like kids Mm -hmm. um and uh when i was probably nine uh i was at summer camp and my counselor played nevermind nirvana nevermind came out and then i went home and i told my mom like you got to take me to the store i have to get this cassette you know yeah yeah so i got nevermind and that was my first like piece of music that like i chose that like that i want to own that i need to own and then from there, it just went, you know, and then I, I discovered, like, No Effects was the first punk band I listened to. And uh-huh. through that, like, you know, it was it was the 90s, so things were, you know, there wasn't an internet. I used to get, yeah. buy the No Effects records, and I would subscribe to the mailing list, which at the time was, like, a physical mailing yeah, list. Yeah, they'd and you'd send get you something stickers in the mail, in the mail. Oh, yeah. and I'd get a catalog, <laughs> and I'd be like, that Lagwagon record looks cool, I want, <laughs> yeah, like, the yeah. cover looks cool, right. I want, like, I want to order that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I just started buying records through, like, distros, because oh, you yeah. couldn't get, like, punk records at, like, the mall, you know? Uh-huh. Um, so that that's how I started getting deeper into punk rock and I wanted to know the lineage and you know no effects that the misfits are cool so like I need right. to know who the misfits yeah. are you know yeah. and so that's kind of discovering that's how I got into it all their yeah influences and yeah stuff. and then from there like me and all my friends started punk bands and we'd play shows and you'd find you'd meet all the local kids it just so happened that we came from a place and a time where like our local scene went on to like international oh, yeah. notoriety, was, but like <laughs> it was just especially like, in this genre. Man. Yeah, like, it would, but it was <laughs> like, no different than any other scene anywhere else. Where right. like we were playing shows, like I said, at VFW halls and high school cafeterias and mm-hmm. the Great Neck Public Library. We would, we would do shows in the basement. <laughs> so it just cool. so happened that like we all kind of all these same kids like when like these bands got record deals and stuff, you know. But there's obviously this pool of talent there because yeah, every other scene, you know, there's got to be other kids trying to start bands, but not to the level that yeah i mean i've heard it, i've heard it said about seattle where it was like sure. the boredom oh that right. was the motivating factor okay. it's like well yeah we started <laughs> bands because like what the hell else were we gonna do, <laughs> yeah, what else do? <laughs> yeah what else were we gonna do so like we started bands and all we we just practiced so much and we promoted and we went on tour because we wanted to get the hell out of there you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, like yeah. um yeah like so i you know like i said i've heard that said about seattle from like that scene where yeah. it was like it's like, wow, how did so many talented people find each other? Like, how did they all right. come from one place? And it was like, yeah, it's because we had, like, shit else to do. So, <laughs> yeah. like, we just practiced every day. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Well, what was the first instrument you picked up? Was it guitar? I My parents got me a keyboard oh, when cool. I was a kid, and I would write songs on it. And oh, I didn't wow. know how to play it. Um, I didn't know... I don't know if you asked me to play a C chord on a keyboard, I would not know how to do that. Yeah, <laughs> but <same. laughs> um, but I would write just melody because like it's, for me, like music has always been about melody. And uh-huh. that's when I talk about when I was a kid and we'd have family barbecues and the Beatles would be on in the background. It was like the melody that got stuck in my head yeah. and I'd leave the party and I'd be thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I'd be singing it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And even now, like melody is king for me. You know? Yeah. So on my keyboard, I would just sort of like think of these melodies and I would figure out, you know, where the <laughs> buttons were that did that thing that was in my head. Yeah. Um, I did that. I got a guitar when I was nine and I took like six lessons and I learned how to play chords and Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just started writing, writing songs. Wow. And do you know how old you were when you first wrote, when you wrote your first song, like lyrics and the whole lyrics and the whole nine, um, probably 11. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you started really, really early. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, it just always felt 
music always i just felt that connection just just since n- i was so, since i was so small you yeah know? And when we started the band like leading up to starting the band when i knew like this is what i wanted to do and starting the band i would go out i was 17 you know mm-hmm. so i i would go out just like every other 17 year old and my friends would go out every night every weekend whatever every day and yeah. skateboard and <laughs> hang out in the park and do whatever and then i just stopped I started going out less and less and started spending more time at home writing and oh, okay. playing. And that was a huge, that was, that was the difference maker was mm. that like 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I wasn't, I didn't go to college obviously, but I wasn't like going out drinking when I was 21. I wasn't going out to the bars and yeah. I wasn't partying and I wasn't, worried about my social life when I was 21 I wrote devotion and desire that's what I was doing wow. you know what I mean I was like in my bedroom like <laughs> writing like focusing on this you that's know what so I mean cool, yeah and it's still that way and I tell young bands all the time we have local bands opening every show on yeah, this tour which is a cool that. thing and um and I talk to them and people ask for advice and I'm always like write songs like focus like this is all that matters and you could look at a band like us who's made a career out of this and made a, a living and like it doesn't get easier. I work <laughs> as hard now as you ever have. as I did when I was seventeen, like trying to get anybody to notice me. You know, uh, yeah. But you have to also another thing I always try to tell people is that you have to find joy in the work, right? Because you know if you're not I mean? enjoying, there's it. no finish line. I guess <laughs> is the point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You never, you never arrive. <laughs> Nobody. Like I, I've spoken to like people who are who've reached you know friends that have reached like the highest levels of success you know yeah evanescence and fallout boy and like superstars Mm -hmm. and they're doing what i'm doing Mm -hmm. and i'm doing what a 16 year old kid is doing and it's it doesn't stop you never feel like okay um, it all paid off (laughs) it doesn't it doesn't happen (laughs) like the what what the payoff is that okay now i don't have to go to work in the morning Mm -hmm. and only and do this at night like now i get to i get paid to just do this work but there's there has to be joy in that work because the work it doesn't it doesn't stop yeah well look at paul mccartney i mean the guy's still putting out records yeah he's working as hard as he did (laughs) he's working as hard as he did on those songs I guarantee that he's laboring over those songs the way he was laboring over his songs when he was first starting. Yeah, totally. Keeps totally. you young. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. That's the plan. So you started, your, was your first job doing the merch for the, the bands? Yeah, how did you get involved with that? Um, I, well, so I just had friends and I wanted to go on tour and I wanted to, which were, those were, those tours were hugely important doing merch because... I got to meet promoters and stuff like that. Yeah. Because Bayside, we played two local shows and then we started touring. Oh, my god. Our gosh. third show that we ever played was in South Carolina. Really? Yeah. So we started touring immediately, just booking our own tours. We booked our own tours for four years. Wow. Touring constantly before we got picked up by, before we got signed and we got a manager and an agent and stuff like that to start doing it for us. But yeah. we booked our own tours for years. And the reason we were able to do that was because I went on tour with, tours with my friends. So you. Who were like one step ahead of us. And you and got to make those contacts. I got to meet promoters and I got their email addresses. And when I started the Bayside, like we would mail those people like our demos and, you know, ask for shows. And yeah. Um, you know, and our those bands were a step ahead of us. They still were not making any money. So, <laughs> yeah. but luckily, but I was, you know, I was at a point go, where yeah. I lived with my mom, yeah. and I didn't need money. So yeah. I was like, well, you know, I'll sell merch, and I know you can't pay me, but like, <laughs> I'll come and hang out. You know, because yeah. when you're 17, it's like, how cool, cool would it be to go on tour? You know yeah. what I mean? So, were you doing like national tours? With yeah, them? yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you, you you were seeing the whole country as a 17 year old. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That's incredible. So you're saying that you're sending the demos out to to promoters and stuff that you that you had already made contact with on when you were touring. Yeah, it started so, that way. Yeah, yeah. But I I read that you guys had a demo tape and you got your name because you're heading down to a show. To like yes, we hadn't played a show yet. Oh, so you hadn't had a show. We yet. hadn't okay, played so a show I, yet. This is the story I wanted. To Four <laughs> kids started a band. We you, wrote a couple of songs. So you had a recording. So we the first thing was to go record. Okay. And we recorded the our demo. Uh huh. And we still hadn't named the band yet because we didn't we hadn't played a show yet. There was no you know we didn't need a name yet. It was you know just what I mean? yeah. It so was just a couple of kids in a basement and we wrote a few songs and we were gonna go record it. Um, there was uh, somebody in our band at the time had a 
friend whose dad did some recording at home. Okay. And he had just gotten Pro Tools. Oh. And he had never had it before. <laughs> yeah. And he needed bands to, like, guinea pig it. He okay. was like, I need bands to come in so I could learn how to use it. Wow. Like, so he would do it, and he wanted $100. <laughs> So our drummer at the time sold weed <laughs> to make the hundred dollars oh, for oh, us to go sweet. and record at this dude's house, <laughs> yeah. um, who wanted like basically kind of like when you have a friend who's like in hair school or something yeah. like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they need like a model, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like sure. we were that. We were like, <laughs> yes. we were like, I just got this thing called Pro Tools, and I don't know how to use it. So like, I figured if I record, just go right into recording a band with it, that's the best way to learn my way around <laughs> yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, that was our demo. Oh, my and God. And then we were going to go see Newfound Glory at a catering hall in oh. Long Island. <laughs> and um, we were like, we were going to give them the demo. And we still hadn't named the band. And we were at the Bayside train station. And we just looked at the sign. And we said, just write that on it. Oh, <laughs> so we yeah, just wrote. Yeah. <laughs> so Bayside is like the neighborhood. That's where my high school was. So we were like, yeah, just write Bayside on it. So we wrote Bayside on it, and we gave Newfound Glory the demo. Did you give it to the guys? You were able to give it to they them? They were so cool. They, like, we went back to their van, like, at, out, you know, out back, and they put it on, and they listened to it with us. Like, Whoa, we stood with, at their van. So rad. And, um, you know, they critiqued it, and they gave us advice, and it was so cool. That is amazing. Um, yeah, they were, you know, this is, like, very early. This is when Newfound Glory was playing in, like, yeah, VFW Hall, Hall. Yeah. catering right, right. halls, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was really on in the, early on in their career. And they were so cool. They like Not only did they accept it and actually listen to it, but they were like, yeah, let's go listen to it. Come back to our van. And we listened to it, and they gave us some advice and stuff. Um, did you? And then that was our name. And then everybody was like, oh, did you get it from Saved by the Bell? And we were yeah. like, yeah, shit, they, we didn't even think of that. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm sure that you've got that all the time. All though. the time. We were like, when we, when we wrote that name on that CDR, <laughs> it's like, it did not even cross our minds. <laughs> that's so But funny. then again, like, you hear it from every band, like, about their name. It's like, well, when we did it, I didn't realize that I was going to be 37 years old. And, like, still that name was still going to be <laughs> attached to me. I yeah. thought we'd play, like, four shows in a VFW hall and then probably never talk to each other again. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like like how I, that was, like we had been in how many bands up until that point? Yeah, that didn't matter. You know what I mean? It's like you don't know that. You, like you don't know that's gonna land. You don't know. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when Fallout Boy named Fallout Boy, did they did they think that it was gonna be on the marquee at Madison Square Garden one Pro, day? It's yeah, like, no. They were like, <laughs> what should we write on the demo? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you did you follow Newfound Glory? I mean, as far as you knew who they were as a band, and you were just fans of theirs. Yeah, we were big fans. We okay. got into like. Um, I got a drive through record sampler. Okay. Um, it had like Newfound and Midtown and stuff on it. And I, I loved that. Um, so that to me was sort of, that was the next phase. I, I yeah. was really into the fat record stuff and, and then the no effects lag wagon, all mm. that. And then the drive through thing happened. And that, that was sort of the train that we sort of yeah. were able to jump on to, totally, you know what totally, I mean? And yeah. then we were able to sort of start playing with some of those bands and get to know some of those bands. And, um, Taking Back Sunday had signed to Victory, yeah. and they just it exploded, you know? Yeah. They got so big. Um, and we sent our demo out to, like, a bunch of labels. This is a few... This isn't the same demo we gave to Newfound Glory. This was a four <laughs> years <laughs> in. We kept years right, later. Yeah. Four years in, we were touring, and we were starting to build a little fan base of our own, and um, we uh, just sent our demo out to, to labels. Okay. Um, every label that we had, that there was a band that we liked on it, we you would just send them. We just mailed it to them, um, and we got a lot of rejection letters. Um, which I wish that we had. You know, it's really yeah. funny. We got a rejection letter from Hopeless Records. <laughs> Did you really? Who we've now been signed <laughs> yeah, to yeah. for like five years. Then <laughs> uh, they were nothing nasty yeah. or anything. It was uh, the Fat Records one. I remember specifically was like this stock letter that they returned was sent oh, back for yeah. everyone yeah yeah and it was check boxes and Aww. it said like um <laughs> like you know let us know where to wi wire the million dollar check was like one box oh. and then one box was like you guys sound great like <laughs> like we'd love to hear more or like here's here's our direct line or whatever yeah and then one was like don't quit your day job and <laughs> one was like Sounds cool, but we're not looking for any new bands right now. Uh, and like that one was checked. You uh, know what I mean? And so it was probably was at least just a joke, and they checked that one for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But still, at least you didn't get the day job one. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 so like, I remember Aw. that one specifically. Um, and Victory called us, and they were like, mm -hmm. We like the tunes. Like, we'd like to come and see the band. 
And the next time we played in Chicago, um, they came to the show and um, they did not sign us. And, yeah. then, <laughs> and uh, then we went back after that tour, we wrote some more songs um, and we sent the new, the even newer demos to them. And they came and saw us again. We opened for a victory band in Chicago at the Fireside Bowl. Oh, okay. We opened for a band called Spittlefield. Um, ah, yeah. And then yeah. they, and mm -hmm. then, and so all, all the whole victory staff was there because it was a victory band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then they signed us after that show. Wow. And it, were they the first band? They were the first label to sign you guys, yes. Victory? So was Dying Wish, is that just your Dying guys' Wish, thing? Dying well, Wish was a friend of ours, a uh, guy named Jake. Okay. Who, uh, to this day, I don't know how he found us because he found us like one or two shows into our career. He oh, like really? So early on. And he came to our like rehearsal one day mm -hmm. um, and watched us practice. And he was like, yeah, I'm starting a label. I want to sign you guys. Oh. So he signed us and signed us <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah. the, like the record was never in stores. Like, okay. He did so much to help us. He like was forging these new connections, trying to get his label off the ground. And we did in 2002, we did like eight or nine shows on Warp Tour yeah. as an unsigned band, which oh, was like whoa. such a massive opportunity. We made yeah. so many friends on that. Such a great learning experience for us. And that was all because Jake reached out to them and was like, I have oh. this label and I got this band and you should really like... Really? Yeah, so Jake did it's, he did a lot for us, but you know, he, he never really was able to get the label off the ground. He did our EP that had no distribution then he did our like it was a label but like the label consisted yeah. of like a thousand bass size cds in jake's <laughs> living room you yeah, know yeah, yeah. yeah but it probably gave you guys some legitimacy yeah. as far as i think as so our merch guy is from philly uh -huh. and he was like 16 at the, this time uh -huh. and he's he was like yeah i had that i had that ev i loved oh it my you know gosh. what i mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the people you, that we were just talking about it last night actually <laughs> really he was like i went to my local record store because I like, saw the band play a show, and I went to my local record store, and I said, I want the Bayside EP. And they were like, yeah, we don't have that. <laughs> and, but we could order it. Oh. So they ordered it, and he, and he got it. And I was like, we, we were so small, and the label was so small at that time that I'm sure I heard about there was some kid in Philly who yeah, that like, wanted it. asked the record store to order it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yo, we sent a record to a store in Philly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, that's yeah. I'm sure that yeah. that would have been such a big thing that early on that I'm sure we knew about it at the time. Yeah, yeah. that's so. Yeah, that's. Crazy. We were touring for like f you know year for four years, like touring nonstop. I mean, touring enough that Victory was able to come and see us like twice yeah. in a year mm -hmm. in Chicago. Wow. Like as an unsigned band, we were touring that much. And, and that was all just from contacts you had made from doing the previous stuff. Yeah, and just, yeah, like, you know, meeting other friends. And then you start doing, like, show trades. And, you know, you meet a band. Yeah. Like, we were from the Northeast. And you meet a band from the Midwest. And you say, like, you know, we have friends that book shows in these, in cities. these cities. And we could, like, you could come here and play with us if you could get us a show in, like, Chicago ah. and Detroit. Oh. And, you know, I mean, the Warped Tour thing was huge for us when we yeah. were able to do those couple of shows because we made a lot of friends um, on those doing those shows. Like we were like still years away from even getting a record deal. So we were like a very non-existent band. Yeah. How, how many dates did you get on? We did about like eight or nine. That's crazy. And Warped Tour was huge. Mm -hmm. Oh, my time, gosh. You know, yeah. Like. But like and there were some co some bands that are that some friends that we made that were like life long friends like because i think about it now and i always try to make it a point with all the local bands again on these shows to yeah. say hello and all these things mm -hmm. but like we're in the position we were in the position that these bands are now that are uh -huh. opening these yeah. shows and we had like finch was one band uh -huh. and oh RX Temecula. Bandits was another yeah. Yeah. <laughs> RX Bandits was another band okay. and Anti Flag were all bands that like came over and they were like, Hey, we watched your set. It was it was really cool. You That's, know what I mean? Yeah. And like to this day those guys are friends. We talked to the like lifelong friends and again with Newfound out back in their van, like behind the yeah. show, like for those guys to have taken that time, you know, and to like given us their time was like really special. Yeah. Um Yes, so you're do. paying it forward now. Almost. We're trying, yeah. you know, and we remember yeah. we 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 remember that stuff. I have a good story. I mean, we're gonna fast forward now a few years. Sure, that's yeah, okay. I'd love but to hear it. Our our first um, 
headline tour that we ever did after Sirens and Condolences came out. Mm -hmm. um, our first proper as a signed band, and we had, had opening bands in the whole nine, our first <laughs> real headline tour. And there was like, you know, 80 kids, 75 people coming to each show, yeah. something like that. That's you know? still a good count. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so we were, we were really excited about that because yeah. before that we were playing anywhere that would have us you yeah. know what I mean? so this is our first like we have a, we have a booking agent and they we have there's contracts and we have guarantees you know what i mean yeah that's nice. we're excited it was yeah. our first like real real headline tour and um you know 50 75 80 kids a night coming and then we played a show somewhere in the midwest and um like there was nobody there at all and the promoter was like yeah my Chemical Romance is playing in town, oh. and this is right when like uh, I'm Not Okay was out. So they oh, were like gosh. just starting yeah. to happen, and um, the promoter's like, "Yeah, My Chemical Romance is playing in town. Like everybody's at that show." Oh. You know, we were like, "Damn!" That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next night, we were in Detroit, and nobody came to the show. And the promoter's like, "Yeah, My Chemical Romance is in town." Oh my god! You're like, like oh my god. you know, like everybody's at that show. <laughs> <laughs> they were playing it at St. Andrews, um, and they were like, the promoter was doing both shows. It was the same promoter was doing the My Camp show and our little oh, show. Okay. And she was, I was Ramona in Detroit, and she was like, they, uh, they invited you guys out to their show, though. You know, they said if you wanted to catch their set, like, you, you know, they, they said you're all on the guest list. Like, come out and catch the set and say hello. So we played our set, and then we booked it over to St. Andrews, and we went in, and we watched their set, and it was awesome. And then we went backstage. They had given us, like, access on, our, hey. on the guest oh, list and wow. everything, yeah. and we went backstage to say thank you and hello and that we were fans and yeah. stuff. And um, they were like, so we heard about, like, your shows. We heard it was, like, two nights in a row. I was like, I can't imagine, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. even <laughs> now, like, I don't know who else is playing right. in town yeah. tonight. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. our show is affecting their show. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and they were, like, they were like, we heard that, like, that had happened in the <laughs> second night in a row. And, like, you know, we just felt, we felt bad. You know, we, we know what it's like to, like, be in that position and uh -huh. starting out and all that. Yeah. And they were like, well, when does your tour end? And we were like, tonight our, was our last show. We're driving back to New York in the morning. And they were like, well, we have like two more shows on this tour. Like, why don't you just come and like wow. do, them, do them with us? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Who, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we went from like playing, you know, we were playing <laughs> these shows with like 50 people at them, 75 people. And then these two shows were like nobody at. And then, like, the next night, we're opening for them, and there's, like, 1,500 people at the shows. And <gasps> I was like, I can't even believe that you guys cared at all. Knew? Yeah. Cared. Yeah. And then wanted to do something for us in, yeah. in exchange, you know? That's amazing that to hear about that. So, yeah, I know. There's been so many, thing, so many things like that where people have been so good to us. Um, yeah, and people in these bands are we huge. Could do that, yeah. And <laughs> if, we could do, if we could ever do any of that, for for anybody because then there was tours like our first couple of support tours that we ever did the bands treated us awful oh and there were nights that i won't name names but there were <laughs> nights where like we weren't allowed to go in the dressing room and like they would there would be a case of water outside the dressing room door with like a piece of paper that said bayside on it oh like wow. just you know yeah. so like there were nights where there were tours where bands were just terrible and then there were these people who were so good to us uh -huh. so we were like if we ever get there, we you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're gonna we back. know how we're going to be. You know, yeah. we know who to act like and who, who not to act like. And what what made you guys decide this tour that you were going to do the let the local bands open for you guys? We were in the studio recording in Terrabang and uh -huh. our uh, manager was there and we were just having like a little round table like we do. Like I just finished before I walked over here. <laughs> yeah. We had our little round table <laughs> with our manager on the bus. And um it would, Chris just was like, what if we do like a battle of the bands to have just like this a little thing? We're like, yeah, you know what I yeah. mean? And then we called the label and we were like, from like a logistical standpoint, can we build, can something be built to yeah. tally votes? You know, like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. cause you do when you want to see one of these ideas through, it's not just like, I like it. Mm -hmm. Green light. You right. Know what I mean? It's like, okay, how do we, how, do we how are people going to enter? Right, you know what right, I mean? right, like, right. What does the entry look like? Like, how, what? 
is there a website that we can use? Do we need to build one? Can we build one? Right. How are we going to tally votes, you know? <laughs> so we started looking into it, and the label was a huge, Hopeless was a huge help in it. Like, they, um, the, the people there were, like, really spearheaded, at least the technical side of how mm-hmm. to get it done for mm-hmm. us. Um, and it was a shitload of work. <laughs> I um, can imagine. You know, it was so much work for them. It was, it's been so much work for us. Uh, and now that we're here, it's so much work for the crew because you have a new oh, band yeah. every day every, yeah. like, who maybe Ooh. isn't as experienced as like people that we usually tour with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they kind of need to be told sort of like yeah. how this works, you know, to how hold the their night's going to go, it, yeah. you know. Um, so it's a lot of work, but um, uh, it's amazing. I have another Goosebump story for you. We were in South Carolina. We're playing at a... Re- so there are two shows on this tour. We're doing small clubs on this tour. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And yeah, which is this so one cool. and the show in South Carolina are sort of like extreme small shows. Most yeah, Casbah doesn't hold. Very yeah, many most people. of them are like four or five hundred people. We're doing yeah, um, upwards of like I think in Philly we did around nine hundred, but in mm. Philly we usually do like two thousand. So yeah, it's like, I know. Um, yeah, so there, it's underplays anywhere from like for the most part it's four or five hundred, couple of like nine hundred to a thousands in there. But like here in South Carolina, I think are like two fifty. Yeah, you this know, one, something yeah. like very, very. Right when very this went small. on sale, I was like, "Whoa, Bayside's coming to the Casbah!" Well, and then the it was like we were sold out. Yeah, that's what we were going. For. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were going. We wanted that. We wanted yeah. like whoa. You yeah. know? So, South Carolina was the other show that was like as small as this. It's like a place that whole. I think it was two hundred eighty people or something uh-huh. held. That we uh, like, we've played all these places a hundred times on the way up. We right. just haven't played them. But in now like that you're, years, yeah. you know? <laughs> you're at a whole other um, level. So that uh, venue in South Carolina, we played a whole bunch of times, and the local band played, and um, we we watch every all the we always watch the locals. We always make Aww. it a point. That's so cool. So like you know, catch the sound check, at least watch the first song or two. Um, show is over, and somebody comes and knocks on the bus, and it's a um, singer from the opening band. Uh huh. And he was just like, hey, you know, just wanted to thank you so much for having us. And um, he was like, this was really special. Um, they were called Fuck Mountain, by the way. <laughs> Great <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> I do not remember every band that opened on this tour, but I, I that, that, one, that, gonna, one, will that one I can recite like that. <laughs> there has to be a story to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the singer of Fuck Mountain knocks on the bus and wanted to thank you. And he said... The first show I ever went to was when I was 16. I came to this venue and I saw your band play. My mom took me, and this was the first show I ever went to was to see you play at this venue. And my mom brought me there, and she passed away this summer. And to like play with you guys at this venue was like wow. just so so special, oh you know? Oh my gosh! So. All of the work that went into this and all of the work that's still going into this is just so unbelievably worth it. Yeah, that pays off. Right there have there. been nights where the winners are like 14, 15 year old kids and oh. their parents are driving them and helping them load in gear. That's cool. And I look at them and I was like, I was 17 when I started this band. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's you're where you are right now, but like. This yeah. could be it. They could you. be, yeah. You know they what could, I mean? Like they could be the next Fall Out Boy. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so all of that work has been so beyond worth yeah. it. You know what I mean? And it it, it is it's special for us every night. Yeah. So these bands they submit what a song on a site and then people vote on it and then you guys choose or how, who? How we do don't you, know. It was all uh, fan voting. We oh, everything is done. So you guys we just. Had, Set it up and sit back and go. It would have been impossible for us to choose. I was wondering, yeah, that would be hard to do. Because there was a thousand entries, a thousand bands entered around around the country. Um, And everybody, the only rules were that you couldn't be signed. Uh huh. Um, And signed was like a relative term because, like, we were signed to Dying Wish Records, which was like it have to be like thousand CDs and Jake's living room. (laughs) Has to be some legitimate label. We looked at everybody. (laughs) We. That was an unbelievable amount of work, and we were helping. The four of us were helping. The label was involved. The ma- our management, everybody was involved in vetting every band. We looked at their social media numbers. We looked at if they were signed. We looked at yeah. their Spotify numbers, like their monthly listeners. Yeah. And if a band was like, we didn't want any bands to be in it if they were obviously going to win. 
Yeah. Nobody wow. could be in it. it. That was basically the rule. Either, because they were some unsigned bands mm -hmm. that for somehow had like 100,000 monthly listeners on yeah. Spotify. Her, her brother's band's yeah. in L.A., and they, they're not signed. They'll, they, yeah. have, they do a lot of listens. <laughs> like that. Yeah, there are yeah. some bands, like yeah. unsigned bands, mm -hmm. that in their hometown will, couldn't sell out these clubs. You yeah. know what I mean? So we were like, yeah. if, you, if you're definitely going to win, you can't be in because it just takes out the whole spirit. It takes right. away the whole spirit of what this is supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. And you don't need the opportunity. If you can sell out the Casbah, you don't need to open for us at the Casbah. <laughs> no, you, you can just play the Casbah. So, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, those were really it. And there was no rules. Like the band in North Carolina was an instrumental band. Oh, you know? cool. Like yeah. the, there have been like some kind of like jazzy bands. There have been like in Boston, it was a straight up hardcore band. You know, like <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. so the genre has been different every day. The, in Dallas the other night, it was kind of like a southern rock kind wow. of like. You know, Skinner yeah. sort of sound. Wow, there. yeah. Um, yeah, so there was no rules as far as the genre or anything like that. So everybody, short of, w with those few rules in mind, everybody who entered got put onto the voting page. Uh -huh. Some shows had like 40, 50 bands like entered. And then we put it up on our site, and next to their name, we put a link to their to listen to their music so that our fans could go and, and Check them out. be involved. Yeah. So our fans, we, we said, if you're going to come to the San Diego show, at least go look at the San Diego date and listen to the local bands and, and vote both. for your favorite, yeah. even if you don't know who any of them yeah. are, you know? Yeah. Um, so we wanted to also give everybody that exposure to yeah. our fans. I love that. Um, and that's the way it worked. And we had 200,000 votes. Oh, my and gosh. And then we came up with, like, 20, I think it was 29 bands. This is, yeah, this is a cool, one of the coolest things I've ever It was heard really of, cool. You know? It was really cool. I mean, you know, it, it was definitely not without its, its issues. There was definitely people who figured out how to cheat the system, and there was, like, <laughs> bot voting. Bots. Yeah. 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 We, was, we saw that, and we had to manually go in and look at things and be like, okay, this band in Dallas had a 800 votes from the Ukraine. Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. voted like I think we're going to have to disqualify them, and we just had to yeah. use our judgment. You know, it was, yeah. like, unfortunately that's what it came down to unfortunately there was no per because this doesn't exist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like i wish there was a site that existed that did all this you know yeah. that we could just say yeah you know battle the and just go there and enter and you and can try to win yeah but unfortunately that doesn't exist and it's <laughs> yeah. imperfect and like hopefully we weeded out the cheaters hopefully there's no cheaters that made it through onto the show. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? right, right. Um, <laughs> You'd probably get back. Have you announced all the openers for the whole tour? Yeah, no? we announced it a few weeks before the tour started. Okay. We announced all the winners. I all, bet you, all if, if there was somebody there, I'm sure you would have got some backlash. Or, yeah, you know. and, there was and then there was like a lot, of, you know, there was animosity because mm -hmm. these local scenes have their own drama. Oh, and of like course. These bands all know each other, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there was drama within their little communities and stuff like that. You know, it it wasn't perfect, <laughs> yeah. and there were days where we were like, never again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then, like I said, then you meet these bands, and I get to watch them, and I see their faces, and we talk to them, and we hear these stories, and we're like, this is the coolest thing that we've ever done. Yeah. Yeah, that mom story, just thinking about it makes me teary. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's, That's so, so sweet. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and I think about you know what happened with us with my chemical romance and with like our expandits like mm -hmm. an anti-flag walking over to this like unsigned little band and watching their set chris caraba we played we were in south carolina once 2001 or two and the bamboozle festival was happening in yeah. new jersey which was huge mm -hmm. it was oh like yeah just and one of the first years of it uh-huh and we were in south carolina on tour playing BFW halls, you know, and yeah. we get a call, like a spot opened up on Bamboozle tomorrow at 11 a.m. Oh, like my the gosh. opening spot. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> still on like this, this smallest stage, like <laughs> as doors, as the gates open, like, yes. if, yeah. do you want to play to the people <laughs> who are walking in? Yeah. You know what I mean? And we said, yes, we'll like get in the van right now. And we did. We got in the van in South Carolina and we drove like straight to Asbury Park and Got rolled to up and load in our gear and opened up Bamboozle like wow. as an unsigned band and Chris Caraba was standing on the side of the stage and he walked over after the set and Dashboard I think was headlining the night oh wow oh, and two, oh yeah 2001 they, he would have one or two yeah, <laughs> yeah he was doing like it already right yeah he was headlining yeah, the festival because he 
And he he walked over. He was like, "Yo, that was that was really great, man." You know, and we were like, "I can't believe you watched that." You know what I mean? <laughs> That's yeah. And what's cr- and all everybody I've named are all friends to this day. Yeah. Like Chris is like a long a time long friend. time friend. We live in the same neighborhood now. You know what <laughs> oh, I mean? Wow. Like we we hang out all the time. Yeah. Barbecues with families and stuff like that. You That's know, and rad. Chad from Newfound Glory is one of my best friends in the world, and we. Go to have mo- a, a standing weekly movie date. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wow! Like these are That's all like, so rad. like <laughs> Steve Choi from RX Bandits, who like was one of the very first people in like a professional band to notice our band. Like he worked on my first solo record a couple of years ago. Wow. Like you know, we went off and like to a, a studio in the mountains in California and like recorded, held up up there and camped out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like these are. So, yeah, these were all like li- these all became uh, my cam too. Like these all became yeah. like life lifelong friends, you know. Did I totally mess up the microphones? I, think you I like went me. like whoosh <laughs> with my hands. I didn't Check. Oh, you, you know what's funny is like you turn me down. Those, <laughs> there. You know what's funny is those bands that that I talk about that weren't cool. Yeah. They don't have these relationships. You right. Know? Yeah. And that, like the secret to like making it in the music industry and whether it's like whether you're in a band or you want to work at a label or you want to be a merch guy or Mm -hmm. guitar tech is like be somebody that people want to be around that is like the fucking secret you know what i mean like there (laughs) i grew up going to shows and i would always notice like um like i'd go see the get up kids or like yeah. you know bands like that and hot rod circuit was always opening those shows and uh, piebald was always opening those shows you know and yeah. i'd go yeah. see no Love Travis. And bad religion yeah. and like <laughs> lagwagon was always opening yeah, those shows yeah. and i was always like it's always like the same opening bands i wonder why that is you know <laughs> yeah, what i mean yeah. and now i get it it's like we take our I, we take people on tour that we want to hang out with. Right, like, yeah. I gotta go live with you, you for gotta, six weeks. That's exactly. What I wanna, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. we take out like Vinny for Movie Life is like one of my best wow. friends. Like I want like any whatever project Vinny's promoting this year, you whether want it's like a, out in <laughs> Avalanche or Movie Life or his solo thing. Oh, like, yeah, that's yeah, who yeah. I want to tour with this year. <laughs> yeah, I want to hang out with Vinny for this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and uh, we, we I was actually talking about it with like some of our crew guys too. It's like, you know, there's there might be better guitar techs and there might be better merch guys out there. It's like, but I f- this is my family. I want to hang out with you all the time. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. You're in a van with, with these people for yeah. months and or weeks. It and, and people it's think that it's like, it's who you know. It's like being at the right place at the right time or any of these other things. It's like, no, man, just be <laughs> good at what you do and be likable, you know, yeah. because like I said, like these lifetime friends, like we just toured with Newfound Glory last year, like, <laughs> so cool. like this, yeah. this relationship that formed like in the parking the lot, the day we recorded our first yeah. demo, like 20 years later, I'm sure that still touring together. Like, yeah. You want to open with Newfound Glory, you want to open for Newfound Glory if you're like a young band, like be cool. <laughs> yeah. And be somebody that they want to hang out with, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like be good, be somebody they want to listen to. And be somebody they want to hang out with. You want to open for Bayside? Like, be good and be somebody that we want to be You want to hang out you know with. I mean? yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the secret. That's so cool. I love that, yeah. I want to go to your, like, birthday party. <laughs> like there'd be a lot Our of cool neighborhood, people. we have, like, a little, we have a cool little neighborhood. It is very cool. Right? <laughs> uh, we're, we live in this, uh, we all live in Tennessee. Oh wow. oh wow! Um, yeah, I moved to Tennessee in uh, 2013. Okay. Um, and I have a few friends that had already lived there. Um, Jack moved there. Our guitar player Jack moved there around the same time as me. And um, so in uh, so our like it is not uncommon at all for like me, Ryan Key, <laughs> Chad, <laughs> uh, Chad uh, Caraba, Arun from Saves the Day, what? Ryan from All Time Low. Like, this is our like. That's our oh. click. You know oh what I mean? my it's gosh! Not common at all. Like, for there, it could be somebody's birthday. It's like an like, alt press magazine. And it's us. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I have no generation. We go bowling, and it's that's who it's us. You know? What? <laughs> we go to top golf, yeah. and it, like it's us. That's yeah. so, so cool. That's the raddest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. But it's all. You know, I would love to play top people. golf and with like, all the know, bands and, I love. And, all, and what's funny is like all those people are in it. Like we have never done any shows with like say all time low outside of like Warp Tour. Yeah. Like our our careers don't parallel so much. Like you know, mm-hmm. whereas uh, with Newfound Glory, like every couple of years we could go do a tour. Newfound yeah, Glory. It makes sense. You know what I mean. Um, but 
I love Ryan. He's like such a just yeah. a, somebody I want to be around. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, like we yeah. have like so those those relationships like they last forever and that's the that really is that's the secret. Just be cool. <laughs> just you be know? cool. It's yeah. not about like how, like sometimes we have some of these, you know, I see the good and the bad of it. You know? I bet. Sometimes yeah. you see them and there's like like all they have more gear than we do you know what I mean? and <laughs> you're, like, uh, you're like that's not what it's about <laughs> you know? yeah. have yeah because if you're a good player that's all that matters and you're a cool person yeah, exactly. you could have the best and gear ever and it comes down to songs really like mm-hmm. the years that we were trying to get signed what it always came down to was like we'd send it out we'd get whatever feedback it was like either bad or lukewarm Mm -hmm. and then we'd go back and we'd write more songs and then we'd send it out again and then we'd go back and we'd write more songs and we'd send it out again and we just kept trying to make the songs better and it wasn't until the songs were good enough that it happened and and that's when when you guys signed to victory victory it was you said it was on the second time around it was the second time it was probably the third or fourth batch of demos that we had sent to them wow but it was probably like the third one that they actually reached back out to us they responded to uh-huh. to them and they said we want to come and see a show and then they still didn't think that we were there so then we yeah. more demos and then they came and saw another show and then they were like okay let's do it you know S- when you signed to victory was that like a pretty i'm sure that was a pretty big moment for all of you guys and like was, did you did yeah. you like call your family and no, all i like- think it was the same thing that a lot of bands think in that moment which yeah. is like we've arrived you you're know? right 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 and it took me 20 years to realize <laughs> that you never arrived yeah. you know what I mean? right, right. like but <laughs> what it is honestly is like it's an invitation to the party is what yeah you know? it's a seat at the table I you like know that. what i mean because before that you like before that you're just trying to get a seat at the table. And that's what I didn't know then. Like, mm-hmm. I thought, like, we're on victory now. We're going to, we're the next Taking Back Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Done. Done deal. Done you know deal. I mean? <laughs> plug us in. Yeah, right. And that's what people think. Like, there's this machine that plugged into, and it doesn't work that way. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, how many bands signed to, like, Warner Brothers? That, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. They're anywhere. ditching you know bands I mean? like, daily. Yeah. There is no machine. It's mm-hmm. like, if this, you, if you got to, that record label, that big manager, that agent, all those things is a seat at the table and now perform. Sure. Now, like, write the songs that are going to connect with the kids, mm-hmm. play the shows that are going to connect with the kids, and that's that's how it works. I always use Panic of the Disco, I think, is, like, the best yeah. example because mm-hmm. they... I remember when they came up, we, you know, we, we were like about to put our second record out. We yeah. Were, we had been touring for seven years and this brand new band pops up out of nowhere. Uh-huh. Yeah. We were on tour with Fall Out Boy at the time. Oh my gosh. Oh. And Pete played them for us from their mp3.com page. Oh, oh my God. And he was like, yeah. I just signed this band. Yeah. Cause he, you yeah, know? he signed them, yeah, right? He was like, yeah. I just signed this band from Vegas the, the, and he pulled up their mp3.com page. He's like, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it sounds cool. So he signed them. They, you know, it took us seven years to get to a point where even at, even then we were doing like 200 kids at a mm. headline show. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Panning of the Disco gets discovered by Pete. They go on tour playing first to four for Fall Out Boy. And even <laughs> opening for Fall Out yeah. Boy at the time was still only like a thousand kids. It wasn't. Yeah, they yeah, weren't. It wasn't yeah. what Fall Out Boy is now. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we, they weren't doing much they were they didn't get anything any opportunities that were any bigger than we got mm-hmm. or lots of other bands got on their first record you yeah, know? yeah 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 and they play then they went out i remember they opened for acceptance and there was like and that was still only about four or five hundred kids mm-hmm. at every show and they just exploded just like oh, that yeah. it was yeah. like enormous right mm-hmm. away and i always use that as an example it was like they didn't get any opportunities that like we didn't get that all so many other bands don't get it's like the difference is that they're, they connected. Yeah. Know? The kids loved it. Their songs were there. They were ready for that moment. Brandon Yuri's he's, uh, he's, his voice is insane. And like, yeah, but they were just so ready for that moment. Yeah. And they mm. were able to capitalize on it. Mm. Whereas like we opened for Fall Out Boy too. We weren't famous after, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, like they got the same opportunity we had just finished having and they <laughs> capitalized on it on a way that we didn't, you know, yeah. like they just had these songs and they had this stage show that just connected. And that I always think that's the prime example of, like, the songs have to be there. The show has to be there. The skill level has to be there. Because yeah. there isn't a machine, you know? Right. They were just, they were just ready when... 
Pete Wentz found them and put them kind of in front totally. of everybody. And these bands like, you know, My Chem is another good example. Of yeah. Like My Chem signed to, to Warner mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they had done a couple of opening band slots and had a little tiny bit of a buzz. But when they had their big moment and all eyes were on them, mm-hmm. they wrote fucking like three cheers <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah like, right <laughs> like they were like fallout boy like we toured when they we toured with them they were on field by ramen yeah we played like chain reaction on that tour we played uh the troubadour on that yeah, tour. yeah. you know it wasn't huge mm-hmm. yeah and then they signed to warner and they wrote fucking dance dance you know oh yeah I mean? yeah like, from under the cork tree <laughs> came out and it was like <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's like, you want to be my cam? Right? Yeah. The fucking mm-hmm. Black Parade. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, it, there is no, you know? <laughs> like, for every my cam, there is a band who signed to, who had the same mm-hmm. agent and the same manager and the same record yeah. label and the same radio exposure that, like, nothing happened to <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like you want to be my cam right the black parade you, know, yeah. you want to be killers the killers right fucking mr Brightside. right well i was thinking about when you were telling us about uh the bamboozle thing where you got to open up the, it's like when you look at i think the killers were the first they played the first band to be playing when at uh, coachella mm-hmm. like in 2002 or something they were like the first name on the poster at the right. very bottom yeah and now if, they'll be the headliner yeah, <laughs> you stick around long enough mm. and you it's like I hate the term of like being in the right place at the right time. It's a matter of like you need to be everywhere all the time. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, I mean? right. Yeah. Like, that, like, <laughs> yes. like that because like one of them will be the right place at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that, so like those opportunities, bands get like who who played first, who opened Bamboozle the year after us. I right. Know yeah. I mean? You don't know. Did they capitalize on it. I don't know. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like who played? Who was the first name on Coachella last year? I don't right. know. But yeah. did they write fucking Mr. Brightside? Yeah, probably it, not. It, 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 it <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that opportunity is not what makes you famous. Right. It's like how you capitalize on the opportunities you do get. I yeah, I love when you said it's you're you're getting the seat at the table because essentially yeah. now you have some with the record label you're getting some sort of you know cred that sit you at the table but if you fail I mean anyone can fail there are so many bands that are going to open for bands in like the House of Blues mm-hmm. size places yeah. like all over the country this year the, what separates them like there's that opportunity which is huge and anybody would kill for that opportunity yeah. obviously but what separates them is uh, did you win over all thousand people there yeah or like did they forget who you were the next day and that's up to you that Mm -hmm. and that's what i mean when i say it's a seat at the table you get you get their attention but like now like what do you do with it yeah like there's no machine that can make them like you Uh uh-huh you're right and it's like what you guys are doing you're putting these bands from each local city in front of a sold out crowd like tonight right. you know 250 yeah. people uh, yeah, are going like to see this yeah. local band and they might gain 100 fans tonight yeah they, they, that's you what never like knew, think, you know? know and yeah and that seat at the table like signing to victory getting and getting booked by the agency group was the first aid, uh, booking agency to represent us and getting those things was like cool we now get to play and like we're going to get these opening slots on tours now mm-hmm. and it took four years of constant touring yeah and, that's crazy that, that seat you toured table. right away but the seat of the table yeah. i learned later <laughs> was not it it was, <laughs> it was just the opportunity to now do something yeah you know you're still at the kids table until you well yeah you're do something. like are you going to be <laughs> yeah. like are you going to play in front of those like thousand people and not gain anything out of it or are you going to be panic at the disco and all thousand of them are coming to see you next time you're in <laughs> right, town. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like that, and no, there's no machine that can make that happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, yeah, thank you so I'm much. So for, yeah, I know. <laughs> Pretty much, our, well, our last question, you've answered the whole time. We always ask, the, uh, like, okay. the whole, th- the, like, talking about like, going back and to where you guys are now, and it's all about just, you know, what advice could you give to uh, inspire an, an artist or what what did you do to get to where you are that maybe they can take a piece of but you've already kind yeah. of answered that I mean, throughout it's a the lot whole of it's a lot of work <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of work and you have to love the work and there is there's not this intangible like i didn't grow up in the right place and i don't know the right people and yeah like neither, like i didn't either until i went and met them you right. know what you, i mean you made and it happen. like it's like th- this idea that like record labels or 
whatever the radio station or whoever is like responsible for your fate is like just not true mm -hmm. you know like everything that we've gotten we i don't feel like we've ever gotten something in our career that happened to us that i was like i can't believe that it was yeah. always like yeah we did we yeah. deserve that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. like, finally. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, we never, like, you know what I mean? Like, we opened small shows. Yeah. And then <laughs> we were able to, like, we went from opening for bands that were drawing 75 people to then drawing 75 people. Yeah. And now that we can draw 75 people, we can open for a band who draws 400 people. Right? And yeah. then when we could draw 400 people, then we could open okay. for a band yeah, who draws 1,000 people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was never like, hey, Metallica <laughs> wants you. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It was, it was, <laughs> it's never... And like that happens to yeah. bands. You know what I mean? Every, for yeah. us, it's always been like... You have to... like there you never like you don't get discovered it doesn't work that way it's not a movie like <laughs> like you don't get discovered like we had to send four rounds of demos and go to chicago twice <laughs> in, in a year to be at the right place at the right time you know what i mean <laughs> like were we at the right place at the right time when victory saw us and signed us or like were we just in chicago four times that year and they you know they what happened I mean? to show up you know what i mean yeah <laughs> And it's good you didn't have a backup plan. You just kept going. We were playing it. The show was at a bowling alley. Side <laughs> yeah. note. You know oh what I mean? Like, it wasn't this amazing like, <laughs> opportunity. It wasn't some like Hollywood showcase. Yeah. We played at a bowling alley in Chicago for the fourth time in Chicago that year. Wow. And we got signed. That's like, wow. that's how it happened. Yeah. So when people say right place at the right time, it's like, I guess if you want to call it that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, yeah. create the moment. You got to yeah. create the moment. Mm. But it's all I cannot like I, I can't stress enough that it's about capitalizing on every opportunity, whether you're playing for 50 kids at a local show, a thousand kids, your first to four on a plane to a thousand kids. You're with, like you're whether you're doing an interview, no matter what, no matter what yeah. it is, like capitalize on on those opportunities. And then if you can, then the bigger ones come and then you capitalize on those and then the bigger ones come. Bring me the best 